Okay, hi, now that we've looked at the plugins that you need to put in to get QGIS functional for the projects that we're doing in sustainability for the High Atlas Foundation, let's look at what you would encounter if you came to QGIS completely fresh, what you would see. This is what would open up, a blank screen here, a browser screen here with some, uh, uh, some pointers to your various uh, hard drives and various programs, and then a layers. And if they were not there, if for some reason you came in and you saw that, just a blank screen, don't panic. Go to view and go to panels and make sure that you toggle browser. So that will come up. All right. And make sure that you toggle layers. And they will come up. Now, if they end up in the wrong place, it's because these things can get undocked and docked. So you might have to find yourself moving things around a bit if you end up with this and this. Usually, if you take the browser and bring it over to the left, it'll turn into a blue bar. And if you put it this way, it'll dock way up there. And then you're going to have to undock it here. Now, if you bring it over to the left, not to the top, then it will dock there. And the same thing with layers, but you have to be careful because if you just put it onto this, it'll just replace that layer. That won't help you. Um, that, so you want to get it down so you can see that it's docking underneath it. So not there. That could be up if you want layers at top. That would be down. And then you have layers tab there back to the default setup. The layers are what is appears on the screen. And if you had installed your plugins correctly, then when you go to web, and you go to Quick Map Services, you should have all of these services available. If you don't, it's because your settings are wrong. And you have to go into Settings and go to More Services and click on Get Contributed Pack. That will then put those. Let me turn that off. That's not the fault on. Um, so then you have access to these. And when I open up my Quick Map services, a couple of things I usually like to do. One is I like to have the Google Hybrid because the Google Hybrid has all sorts of labels as well as a nice satellite image. As we can see, it's got roads and stuff, so that appears there. Another one I like to bring in is the Esri because it's very highly detailed. So I go to Esri and I go to the Terrain then I have a good terrain. I can bring this underneath the S3 terrain. There's the S3 terrain. And you can turn off the Google Hybrid to see what the terrain looks like in S3. Oh, if it wasn't the terrain I wanted, let me take the terrain out. Let me remove layer. And let me see the Google Hybrid is unchecked. So let's go back to web and go to S3, and let's bring in the standard S3. There's a standard S3 that has the roads on it. And if you bring in, if you want the satellite, then you would go to web and you would go to Quick Map Services and you'd go to S3 and bring in the satellite. And then bring that up the top because these are layers, and you get this really highly detailed scalable raster takes a while to reload every time that you can keep above your terrain and you can then see the roads and where they are. So there's that road. And then your Google Hybrid you can always turn on on top of that and you can use them as you see fit. So that's the first thing is to come up with a map. I'm going to keep Google Hybrid on for now because it's the most useful for me. And there's a so, site in Morocco that I want to look at. So, for example, if I go in here and I say Marrakesh, just for example, right, then it's going to zoom me into Marrakesh, and then I can come in and you will note that in our case, I happen to know that the High Atlas Foundation is right here. And if I right click on it, I get the coordinates. I can copy those coordinates to the clipboard and go back to my QGIS 
And then down here on the left, type to locate, we can put control V, paste them in, and it starts to blink. Now it's disappeared again because I need to zoom in on it. So why don't I go to, because the coordinates are all still there, go here and say, yeah, I want to do it at 1 to 1,000. And then, now that I'm at 1 to 1,000, if I paste it in again, there it is. It came in. So you have to choose your scale, and then you can work on you know, backing it up or zooming it in. So there's the High Atlas Foundation, and it is actually in our Google Hybrid. But we're going to have to put a point there. We need to put our own vector layer point so we can start doing any kind of data, because that just is showing the Google map. So what you do then, once you've found an area where you want to put in a point, is you go to Layer, and you say Create Layer, whether a shape file or a geo package. I'm going to use shape file, and I'm going to call this file name the HAF um, office. Offices, I'll put it in case there's more than one, I'll have a layer for that. And the geometry type is going to be a point, <coughs> and then the CRS is coming in at 4326. We'll keep it that way for now, and the, you can put fields in for that, so you can say um, the ID is already there, so the new field would be um, institution, and that's a text string, make it 200, and add it to the field list, and then we can say street address, put that in, and we can say uh, GPS coordinate, and add that there, and say OK. And then because we now have that on the map, and you can see I can toggle it, there's nothing in there, it's just the attribute table. So I can right-click on that attribute table and open it, and when it goes to the street address or the GPS, I do know I have this, the GPS coordinates, so I can come in here and edit it and add them by toggling them. But so far, still, nothing happens until I go to, it adds a new field, you know, need a new field, we want to add data in. And so you can actually add a feature right there. And then we can put in the GPS coordinates that we have. And the ID, we can call it one. And the institution is HAF office. And then I don't have the street information yet. So I'll leave that blank. And you'll want to then toggle off of this and say save. Now it still hasn't put a point on the map. So to put a point on the map, what you need to do is toggle editing and go to add point feature. And this turns into a little target. And then we can put that in. But it's going to ask for you to put that information in again. So there's my coordinates, and the institution is HAF office, and the ID is number one. And it's actually now going to put that information, should put that information in when we save this. And it has to be above the Google Hybrid for you to see it, and there it is. So what's up with the, um, the attribute table now? Well, now it's got two of the same, and we don't need them both. So we're going to delete by hitting Edit, and then we want to cut this, and we just have that one. All right, and then save it. 
So you're probably wondering if we had started with this layer on top, would just by putting the coordinates in, would it have shown up? So let's see if it does. Let's do this again. Let's remove this layer from here. And let us go to the layer, create layer, shape file layer. And once again, we will call the file name institutions and the geometry type will be point and there will be a field in there that is for the name of the institution put that just quick name and make that 200 add the fields list and then put street address and put coordinates and add that and say OK. If we then open up the attribute table and we go to edit and we go to add here, then we put ID 1, we put HAF office, we put in those coordinates, and then put that in and then save it nothing appears there because we haven't put it on the map. We've told it that there's a coordinate, but we don't have an actual point. And so that's why the best thing to do is to not have that feature in there to begin with. So let me cut that out, put it in the trash. Right. So we have a attribute table, but it doesn't have any features in the app. When we're in this and we toggle editing and we go to add feature here to add a point feature, now we can add that point feature and we can add all of our information in there. So HAF office and coordinate system later representation. Ooh, that's a big mess. And then a dot appears. And if you stop editing then, and you save the feature, and then you go and double click on this, you'll get the symbols. And we're going to put a big symbol for it like that. So we know that that is the home base that we're going to work with. <clears throat> All right. Now, similarly, if we want to go to put in the villages, then we would create new layer and we might call it HAF project villages and then we will go for points again and it could be multi-point I think I'm just going to do point and the name of the field will be just name and we'll make it long enough to accommodate a bunch. Add field list. You can put in population. <clears throat> you can add that to the field list. We can put in coordinates and add that to the field list. And of course, you can go on and on and on. We can put picture, because we want to add a picture in there. And then say OK. Now, in order to get the villages, Maybe I should rename this. Let's rename this one. Rename layer. I'll call this HAF base camp office. Right. So the villages, we'd have to find the villages. Like, where are they on the map? And sometimes you can go right from here if you know the name of a village. So let's go to. High Atlas Foundation on Sustainable Agriculture. And <clears throat> let's look at some of the programs. So there's tree distribution, there's carbon credits compared to the, let's do clean water and find out if there's any information here that you could get. So there's water for Timchi Village. 
Okay. So water for Timchi Village, you could then go into your Google and say Timchi Village doesn't show up. Is it Timichi Morocco? So Timichi is the way it shows up here. There it is, Timichi. Maybe I got it wrong from here. It says Timichi. It is Timichi. And it's in Seti Fatima. So let's just see if this map recognizes Timichi. So we go to Timichi. And nothing shows up. So when that happens, if you can't find something in there, Timichi, no, it won't show up. So what you will do is go back to here and again, find the place that you want to get. And probably this part here of Timichi, right click, get the coordinates to the clipboard. Now go in and paste down here, and there it is. And we have, we're coming closer, and you're going to say, ooh, that doesn't look right. Let's, at this level, go in again, and there it is. All right. So remember, you've got to get your scale right, and now you need to add that point. So once again, to add that point, we're going to be in the villages here. That's what to be highlighted. And then we go to the pencil and then go to the point feature and then drop a point there. And this is the first village you're entering. The name would be Timichi. And the population we don't have yet. The coordinates we want to drop in. And we'll deal with a picture later on. And now a point appears down here. And if you don't like the way that looks, double click on it. And let's go to a red dot. But let us go to in the size. Let's not do millimeters. Let's do pixels. And that way, if we do pixels and we set it to about 10, that should have worked. I should have gotten pixels. I said I want to set it to pixels. I want to set it to 10 say apply it's not doing it sometimes that's what happens 10 pixels say apply nothing hmm oh because I'm still on the base camp my bad there we go now let's do that again Go to pixels, go to 10, and apply it, and now there it is. And because I've set it with pixels, it will adjust to the size of the map. All right. Seems like I went to the base camp and I changed it. I wanted that because this is the this is the indicator of something cool. So I'm going to go to pixels again there too. And say okay, so now my oh, it's still too small. So let's go to 20 there and say okay, there it is. All right, so we got a star there for our main office, and then down to the mountains we have Tamichi, and that's how you start adding these. Points in. If we go to another village that the HAF is working with, we go to their website and see if there's other information we can do. So, Ramna, for example, they have a sustainable irrigation thing. And let's see if Ramna shows up. So, let's go here and try to find Ramna. Sometimes the spellings will be messed up. It's Ramna Province. Ramna Larachi. So it looks like Ramna is a whole province. So that doesn't give us the actual place in there. However, 
run the province is going from Sidi to Hami. Let's see if I and Ben Gurir. Now we know Ben Gurir is where the Muhammad VI Polytechnic University is. So we should put that into the map and right click there and get those coordinates and then put Muhammad Polytechnic. But that wouldn't be one of the villages. That would involve creating a new layer and saying universities or university partners and then again making it. I'm going to try multi-point because I've never tried that before. And the field would be name again. I'll keep it at 80. It doesn't matter. And coordinate. And then contact person. There's so many different things you can eventually put in there. And say OK. And then the university partners, I guess it can sit right there. That's fine. Let's give it a, a legend that is more interesting. Let's say showcase. We'll use that honeycomb for that. And we'll go again to pixels. And we will make it 15. And we'll say OK. And then when we go to toggle it, we can make sure we're at the level of 1 to 250. Come over here and put in those coordinates. And there we are at the university there. And where do we want to put our... Yeah, right there. That's the entrance. And then go to the pencil, go to the points and tell it there. and say ID. We'll say this is one. The name is Muhammad Six Polytechnic. Coordinates go in there. And the contact person in our case is Muhammad Alrani. So we can put Dr. Muhammad Rani. Put those in. And so now we have a point on the map of our own. So it wouldn't matter whether the Google hybrid map is on or off if you're using the S3 satellite. Um, if you're using the S3 standard, S3 is really weird. Sometimes the data comes in, sometimes it doesn't. Oopsie. So Google hybrid is the best in many cases and what's publicly available. So I'm going to keep the Google Hybrid up. But there's many different maps that you can put in depending on what you want to analyze. If I go to a quick map services and I go to a uh, a Waze maybe? Waze World. Waze World. Bring that up, and you can see the Waze map. Turn this off. Hybrid, turn this on. The S3 standard. So that's a Waze map that will show us the different streets in the Waze. And now that we have that in there, you can just see the different ways that you can add maps and work with maps by adding those points. Now, if we want to add the whole university as a shape file, as a polygon, instead of a dot to get the extent of it, then we would go to our university partners. Oh, we'd have to create a new layer because these are only points, right? So we'd have to go to layer and say, create layer, new shape file layer. This would be called um, partner region shape files. And then in the geometry type, we would go to a polygon. And we'll call the first they field the name as usual. And we'll call the second part, um, what do you want to call that? Um, 
don't think we need it right now. We'll just leave it as such. Say OK. And now that we have the region shape files, you can go to here. And because you made it into a polygon, instead of seeing points here, you see a shape. And when you click on that, you can say, well, the, the university goes from here to here. Seems to go down to here, maybe. Goes to here. And there's the green energy park, so and there's a multidiscipline thing, so it looks like it even goes through here and up to the road there. And then you oops. Oops, I lost it. Let's try it again. Goes from here to here. Let's go all the way down to there. Let's go over to here. Let's go up to there. Let's go up to here. Let's go up to there. Let's go up to there. Let's go to there. And then if you right click, you need to add an ID and a name, which here is UM6P, which is Muhammad Polytechnic, and then say OK. And then you get the shape file there that is right over there that you can work with. And you can change the opacity so that you can see it better. And then you have shape files, and then we have point there, which is where you enter in. And then you have to stop editing and save it. And now you have points and you have shape files that we're adding to the map, as you can see. And that's way up here in Ben Gurir. That one is down here um, in this region of Sefifadma. That's how you add points and polygons and get started with your map. Next, we'll look at measuring distances.